This video is sponsored by MPB. In the late 1930s and 1940s, someone found themselves lost in the streets of Manhattan. And that someone happened to be a photographer to whom that American reality was somewhat foreign. To whom that fast-growing pace of the American consumerism and society became somewhat of a subject of interest. And that someone happened to be herself a sort of traveller, navigating through life and the many places of it, capturing the details, the gestures, the people, the quirk and the wit, the seen and the unseen. And when I read what she wrote, that photography is an art form which means human beings expressing their understanding of and connection with life, themselves and other human beings, I thought to myself that I'd have to let you know about the story of Lisette Modell. Unlike many other photographers we've covered on the channel, Lisette Modell had a somewhat bourgeois upbringing, as her family was able, even in times of some economic constraint, to provide her with tutoring that made her fluent in many subjects and languages, as well as with an appetite for music. And it was in music that she started her creative pathway. She studied with composer Arnold Schoenberg himself responsible for new musical composition methods. But Schoenberg was also a very respected artist, and through his connections, Modell was introduced to expressionist painting, and in turn, to photography. And when looking at some of these early examples of expressionist painting and photography around this period in time, we can perhaps wonder if Modell's later fascination with capturing people was introduced by the constant quote-unquote subjectification of people, silhouettes and bodies by these early photography and painting works she had access to. And painting in particular would have probably not been such a constant in her life had she not met painter Evza Modell whom she married in 1937. But the 1930s had also brought other changes into Modell's life. She was at the time living in Paris, studying visual art and frequenting psychoanalysis sessions. And this combination of events was somewhat responsible for a period of introspectiveness that sources and curators of her work have described as her lonely period, in which she observed people trying to immerse herself into different social backgrounds that were different to her own. And although the claims are that she only had two photography lessons in her early life, they were by far extremely important in her growth as a photographer. And the first lesson she had was given to her by her sister Olga on the basics of photography. However, the second and most important one came from Rogi Andre, the first wife of famed photographer Andre Kertes, and a photographer in her own right. And she told Modell to never photograph anything you are not passionately interested in, which is inherently a lesson we can all take to ourselves as photographers. However, if there is one thing I find highly admirable is Modell's personal and working ethic, which she gained and maintained since a very early stage of her career. And she was described by friends and acquaintances as having had high standards for herself and her work. And this is not to be confused with ego or vanity. But to a certain degree, it is fulcral to take yourself seriously in art, life or whatever else. And as photographers, creatives or artists, we, despite of being professionals or not, 
should hold ourselves to a certain ground and take our work seriously. After all, a photograph can be the mirror to the photographer who took it. And through it, we can see Madel's consistency in practicing developing her photographic eye, finding her subjects and inspiration. And her work since the early strolls through the Promenade des Anglais in Nice to much later in America is in itself a glimpse into her professionalism, her dedication and passion as a photographer. But what is also apparent in these early photos taken in Paris and Nice are certain traits of a style she would become known for, and that is a funneled close-up view over a subject which induces us to very raw concepts and emotions such as vanity and loneliness at times. And I believe her use of enlarging and cropping techniques in the darkroom serves precisely to highlight this untouched emotion or behavior she saw, which, in a way, symbolizes a certain rawness of being, that in turn is an idea that continues to be present in her photography as she enters the next stage of her life by moving to the US. The Medells immigrated to America in 1938, due to political tension and uncertainty in the old continent. And after settling in Manhattan, Modell began capturing what was now her new world. And New York City was then, as it is now, a polarizing center of fast-paced energy. And as other contemporary photographers, just like her good friend Bernice Abbott, chose higher perspectives and larger formats to capture this atmosphere, Modell resorted to a 35mm camera for most part, which was highly unusual at the time and a unique low perspective for which she is known with her series Warning Legs. And this series in my eyes represents the frenzy of the city life, but also is a symbol of a culture that was different from her own. And just like she did in her lonely years in Paris, she observed these details of people, but also focused on their unique expressions, details and emotions. Nevertheless, Model is also known for her series Reflections, which in a way explores this fascination with consumerism and the manufacture of things, with the velocity of how money was made and spent in America. And these are complex images with superimpositions of objects, buildings and people, thus introducing abstraction just like the paintings she had seen as a young woman studying art. And these two series didn't go unnoticed, but also her work at cafes and nightclubs she frequented with her husband. And eventually she drew the attention of Carmel Snow and, more importantly, of Alexei Brodovich, the famous hat director for Harper's Bazaar, whose reputation we touched when we talk about Robert Frank recently in the channel. And with that being said, she ended up working for the magazine, being one of her first assignments to photograph Coney Island. And between the 1940s and 1950s, she continued her work as a photographer, working for other publications such as Look and Ladies Home Journal. However, work started decreasing, in most part due to her association with the New York Photo League, a target for scrutiny by the House of Un-American Activities during the McCarthy era, which combined with Model's refusal to cooperate with the FBI, led her name to be placed in the National Security Watch List, which virtually is what happened to many artists in this period, leading to the decline and end of many, many careers. with my cameras and I like to explore both the world and how creative I can be with my equipment. And my go-to for equipment is MPB. MPB is a platform of used photography and videography equipment and by repurposing equipment they're giving me but also you more possibilities to create, envision, experiment, experience and ultimately enjoy your photography. 
And with MPB, you can buy, sell or trade your used equipment. So next time you pack your bags for your next photography adventure, don't forget to check their platform and socials for a constantly updated catalog and new opportunities. And with the decrease in offers and work, Model turned her focus to teaching, and she became a teacher, known for instigating confidence in her students to produce their work and be truthful to their ideals and personas. To see the images that surround them everywhere and to know that the boredom of routine and the fear of whatever it was, failure, crowds, challenges, shouldn't be accounted for and that placed between the eye of the photographer and the world, the camera reveals both man and the outside world. And so Lisette Model became this influential teacher, and among her students was photographer Diane Habus, who also became famous for her fascination in capturing people, particularly those situated in the fringes of society. And despite this, Model continued photographing. In fact, she never stopped, even in her later years, as she developed health conditions that affected her body, and in particular her hands, which is a testament to her integrity and dedication to photography. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching and for supporting the channel. I hope this video was helpful in any way, shape or form. Um, it was very important for me to go through the um, career of Lisette Model, someone like her who is so prolific and was such an important person in terms of like um, setting up the language for photography and in particular street photography. And I think that, you know, um, it was very helpful for me to understand that and like holding ourselves to a high standard as well, which is very important. Um, and I guess that if you want to find out more about her, links will be down below for things that I found out about her, um, whether that is interviews as well, and, you know, just some articles. And if you want to find out more about what I do, you obviously can explore the channel, uh, but most importantly, you can find out about my photography, what I do kind of like outside of like YouTube. Um, and also, um, if you want to check out my most recent like photography adventures with Flash, you're more than welcome to. Link will be down below. And also the link to MPB, who kindly sponsored today's video. So if you want to check out um, any equipment, any, you know, if you have your eye on something, just have a look down below and you can find a good deal or you can find an opportunity. And so, yeah, with that being said, I hope to see you here very soon as I will produce content very soon. And so I'll see you here for another video. And I guess that you stay safe. Keep shooting, film, digital, whatever you do, and yeah.